Hey everybody, Tracking Pat here, and today's video we're going to talk about how to use the search editor in the Prototrack RMX. Now keep in mind that we'll probably eventually make this in the RLX as well, and they work the same way, but for now we're going to stick to the milling machine. So what I've got in here is I've got a program, which is basically just a pocket that's shaped like a D, but then I've got four holes that are drilled, and then I've got four helical drilled holes on top of them for counter bores, okay? And what happens a lot of times is I may need to have more than just what I got going on in here, and I'm going to show some of the advantages to using the way that the search editor works, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the very end of this program, and I'm just working my way through the hard way. Notice that? Well, there are a lot of other ways to get around in here. So the first thing I want to show you is that there's a shortcut key in every one of these buttons, and if you hold it, you'll see a little ring show up, and when you let go, what happens, whoops, sometimes it doesn't like my fingers, is it'll automatically take you back to the very beginning of the program, and a lot of times people don't realize that that's even in there, okay? So you don't have to swipe back and forth each time to get around in here. There's another way, which is to use this button that says list step, and in list step, it shows me all the pieces of the program, and as I push either step forward or step backwards, you see that it highlights that section. And if I wanted to get to that section, I would just push return and I would automatically be on event five. Okay? Another way is if I want to get to the end of the program, I'm on somewhere in the middle, just push go to event number because it'll always choose the last one. So if I hit abset, I only have to swipe one time to get to the end of the program. So these little shortcuts will help you get around a lot faster. What I'm about to do here is I'm going to use the copy and I'm going to show you some tricks in using copy. So when I use copy here, I want to do a repeat and I need four more of those, but I need the complete program. So I'm going to go from event 1 to event 13 and I'm going to have a 2 inch offset, right? In the X axis, I'm not going to move the Y or that, but I'm going to do this three more times and here's the most important part. It always chooses the last tool in your program. However, I need to use tool number one, two, three, and four, I believe. So in order to make it go in the right order, you have to choose the first tool in your sequence before you answer this question. That's going to make it automatically number. See here, I've got tool number four, and then tool number three, and then tool number one and two will be in the very beginning of this right there. Okay, so remember that, very important. It's always going to want to use the last tool, which would mean to try to make the whole part with tool number four, and that won't work. So you always put the first tool in your sequence when you use a copy. Now that I've got all this stuff, what happens if I want to change things, like change a feed rate or change a depth or something like that? Well, this is where the spreadsheet editor comes in. So I go to the edit button, and you'll notice in here, this is where I delete, this is where I erase, and right between them it says spreadsheet editor. And in here, you've got different columns of things that you can change. So let's set this up for the things we want to change. So I'm going to open the options page, and those green buttons are the things that I'm looking at. All right? So I don't need number of passes, so I'm going to shut that off. But I do need a couple of other things in here. So I'll, let me see. i got my Z feed rate, my XYZ feed rate, my rapid. Um, that looks okay. If I needed to add anything else, it might be tool number, right? And then when I close this, you'll see that now there's a line for the tool numbers. What's great about this is if I had to change some feed rates, you'll notice all my different events are still the way that I made them in my program. But if I come up here and just select by one of these, it stacks them so I can make quicker changes. So if I wanted to change all of my 1800 feed rates, instead of swiping through the pages and selecting each one, I could just come up here now and say, hey, I want to change all of them and change it to 1900. It's a way faster method of doing your editing than having to go page by page. If I go by actual tool numbers in here, you'll notice if I push it twice, there's all my tool number fours, followed by all my tool number threes, and so on and so forth. So if I needed to change something about those tools, I could do it in there right away. If I went to my PEC drilling, you'll see all my PECs are here. I could select the first PEC, say, hey, I want to change them all to be three PECs and they're all changed automatically. So remember, in the search editor, I can choose what these columns are through the options page, select the ones I need, unselect the ones I don't need, make my changes, and then when I go back to the program mode, those changes automatically happen in each event that I selected. So search editing is very, very 
uh, useful and much faster than trying to do it each piece at a time and go, yeah, I want to change that. And then you change it and you go to the next one, I want to change that. Okay, so use the spreadsheet editor to get through the part faster, make all your changes globally, and then when you're done, don't forget to save your program as a completed process. Okay, um, that's basically how to use that. I hope these different shortcuts in the programming mode along with the editing really help you to be more proficient at doing your programming. As always, you'll see me in the next video. Thanks a bunch for watching and keep on tracking.